Hi y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you like to hear someone talk about cats, rats, dogs, or reptiles, go ahead and hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. So the last video I showed you guys was my pet room and I was like, oh, my pet room is a mess. Um, the way that when we moved into this house, we thought the animals would fit in here, did not fit in here. And I also wanna note, yes, I do still have my rats. However, the pet room is in a study, so it's an open, room and one of my dogs has an incredibly high prey drive towards my rats specifically so my rats are actually in um it, it's a craft room guest room and then the rats are in that room so just to get that out of the way i did do some changes in here already we are working on even more changes um we're currently we started the build of the huge iguana enclosure so be looking forward to those videos. Um, I'm going to break them down into different parts, but here's what we've got right now. Like I said, I was going to put together these stackable enclosures and go ahead and get them decked out and film another video. And I did that. They're right here behind me. There are three here. So I did go with Zen Habitats. Gordon has always had a Zen Habitat enclosure. Not always. He's had one for quite a while now, though. Um, once he got moved out of quarantine after I've had him, which I've had him for over a year now. <clears throat> so when he got moved out of quarantine, I moved him into a Zen Habitat enclosure. Um, so that was close to a year ago. And it's been amazing for him. Whenever I had all of the issues with the ants and stuff in his enclosure, it was super easy to take it apart and make sure every single piece was sanitized before putting it back together again. So my husband and I were a huge, huge fan of the enclosure, mostly for that specific reason. So when we were deciding what we were going to continue, uh, what kind of stackable enclosures, it was like a win-win that we were going to go with Zen, especially since they... Um, now offer the stackable enclosures and it was gonna fit the room super nicely. And it ended up being a huge upgrade for Dragon, my bearded dragon, and a ridiculous upgrade for Mowgli, my leopard gecko. So I'm gonna show those enclosures to you guys real quick. Okay, we are going to kind of start at this angle and down here I've got Dragon on the floor and there is a method to the madness of why they're organized like this. Dragons on the floor because we do use the um, overhead lighting, which are hidden in these drawers or shelves, whatever they are. This is Gordon, my blue tongue skink in the middle. And then Mowgli has the least amount of weight in his enclosure. So he is up there on top. And I'm going to kind of go through and just show you guys a little bit of what I've got going on here. So I've got Dragon down here. I do have a lock on here. However, I was just cleaning, like spot cleaning some stuff. So the lock's off. The only reason why I have a lock on this enclosure is because I have a cat who loves to open up cabinet doors and things and cats love warm spaces. So I did not want him to figure out how to open this and then get in to try and be warm and then, you know, have an issue with a loose dragon. He's out exploring right now. He has been super active in here. Um, this is kind of how I've got it set up. So it's really, really nice. This is a four by two by two, I believe. Um, and it is a wooden enclosure. I am not sponsored by them. I did pay for these. Um, I think there was a discount if I bought multiple enclosures at once, which I used. But other than that, like the company had nothing to do with me purchasing this. It was solely like <laughs> my cat. It was solely, I got it on my own for my own reasons, just because I liked it. Um, so I haven't had any issues with getting the temperatures right in here. And I do like a really high basking spot for him. He remains super active when I do that. He does have some loose substrate in here. Don't come at me. I've had this kind of set up for him before. And like I said, as long as his temperatures and everything are kept accordingly, which I kind of, Brita Dragon Care is kind of all over the place right now, um, especially in the last like year or so. It's kind of been evolving, I feel like. And I do keep his basking spot a lot warmer than the 95 degrees that I've heard a lot of people recommend. Um, but anyways, with that being said, I feel like he needs to be kept more at, and this is my personal preference and what my personal bearded dragon seems to like the most 
is at about, um, I guess I should be showing you guys him. He's kind of back here moving around and hiding. Um, so I tend to keep it closer to the like 112, 115 range, kind of in there. Anywhere from like 110 to 116 is ideal. And like I said, he is super active. Now I do live in Texas, so it's a lot warmer where I'm at. And he has maybe brumated a couple of times, but it's only for like a couple days. He remains active all throughout. And it's just, you know, this enclosure has just really, really worked out for us. We've got this large piece of wood. We've got a hammock. We've got some bricks. We've got some artificial plants, some rocks. I do have a little bit of tile that I like to feed him his salad on, you know, there's some other artificial plants and things. And yeah, this has just worked out really, really nicely for us. So I am a fan. I see you, bro. I see you. There's one more little overlook of that one. Okay. And then here in the middle, we've got Gordon. So obviously I have, this is Delilah. But I've got Dragon's Enclosure down here because it's the largest. Um, and he's got like some loose substrate. He's got like heavier bricks in there and things like that. Rocks and tile. So I put the heaviest one on the bottom. He's also the easiest to like get to and handle and all that. And then in the middle I've got Gordon who has um, definitely plenty of substrate. Blue Tongue Skinks. I have a classic Indonesian. So they do like to burrow. They like higher humidity. Um, this is the two by, sorry, the four by two by 16 inches tall. And it is the bamboo PVC. So it's a higher humidity one. Um, but this is his kind of more basic setup. I really want to wait until I get to a reptile show to replace like cork wood and things like that. They tend to just be so much cheaper there. He was out a second ago. I can see the tip of his tail in this back corner, but he's probably about ready to hide or burrow. It's kind of later in the evening and that's about the time he likes to burrow. He might be in his PVC. Oh, do I see a little bit of him? I do. I don't want to startle him because he does get startled <laughs> and I startled him. Sorry, Gordon. But um, yeah, so his enclosure, I'm still working on getting kind of set up just a little bit better, a little bit. Um, I like them to be pretty busy enclosures and he really likes them to be busy. Earlier today, he was all in and out of this. I'm definitely leaving that in there. He kind of uses it like a jungle gym a little bit. It's super cool. Um, but yeah, so I'm definitely looking forward to adding more for him. He definitely needs it. And then again, I've got the shelving right here. Once again, I keep my classic Indonesian blue tongue skinks heat pretty warm. And I've had no problems heating this up whatsoever, just like I haven't down here either. Um, I don't know. I've heard a couple of people complain about keeping these warm, and I just haven't seen it to notice it. Um, but up here, I've got Mowgli, my leopard gecko. Okay, there's definitely some dust on here, and I'm sorry, you guys. Um, this is Mowgli, my leopard and gecko's enclosure. I definitely need to clean out his little poop corner, so I'm trying not to get it. But uh, I did continue to leave his little climbing rock in here. There's some tile in here. There's some bare flooring in here. I definitely need to do some upgrades in here. His little heat mat is over here on this corner. He's in that hide right now. Um, I do offer UV, um, UVA, UVB. To, or I'm sorry, UVB <clears throat> to my leopard gecko. Occasionally you do see him out and about or even just like his tail sticking out of that hole and stuff to kind of absorb that. Sorry about that, it's raining and um, <laughs> one of my dogs is a very vocal dog, but still a good boy. Anyways, so yes, he does utilize the UVB. I do recommend it for all animals. I even have it for my white tree frogs. I don't know, but Anyways, if they have it in real life, they should have it in their um, kept as pets life, however you want to say that. And my leopard gecko also utilizes every single inch of this space. This is a huge, um, I believe it's like a 90, maybe an 80 gallon equivalent. So if you give them the space, they will utilize it. Mine loves to climb too. I see him climbing this thing constantly all the time. 
So I definitely think that in the next few years, we're gonna be seeing some improvements to leopard gecko care and requirements. And I feel like it is for the best interest of the animal and definitely due to happen. Okay, so unfortunately I cannot get this whole thing in the frame, but I'm gonna try. So like I said, a stacked enclosure over here. Sorry for all the glares and whatnot. And this one's pretty much done. It's huge, it's tall, it's seven foot tall. I do have to step on a stool to get into Mowgli and I'm totally okay with that. Um, he's easy to handle, so it's not a big deal. And then over here, it's kind of a chaotic mess once again. Like I said, we are currently, we've started building an iguana upgrade and I've got the white street frogs underneath the iguana. And then I've got Tootie, my tortoise over here in front of, unfortunately on the floor in front of the white street frogs. Sorry guys, my dogs and cats are going to be running in and out of here. So that's kind of annoying, but it's just the way it is right now. Um, so he, I am working on his upgrade though. I'm going to move him into the 75 gallon long. And currently I'm trying to grow some grass in there for him and give time for that to get established before I move him in there. Um, but he'll get moved into that, eventually a tortoise box. I am going to block off those walls and things like that where it's not like a reflective glass uh, tank for him to be in. But so far he doesn't really seem to react to the glass, like keeping him in a glass aquarium. So I'm not too, too worried about continuing that personally. Um, so here's where we're at currently with the pet room. This video is already long enough. I don't know if I can actually get it all in here, but here is where we are. Here's where we are and tons of improvements are going to be made. 2021 is the year for getting this where I want it. But anyways, I hope you guys like this video. And if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe.